Hello everyone, welcome back to this week in gaming news. Computex is going on, so we got quite a lot of news. Most of it is in, of course, the technology department with graphics cards and other tech like that. But before we get into the Computex stuff, let's get into some benchmarks for the GTX 1070. As you can see here, uh, benchmarking Doom at 1080p, the GTX 1070 is easily able to crush that. Uh, it doesn't quite beat the 980 Ti, but I've seen from various sources that sometimes it does beat the 980 Ti, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it beats the Titan X, sometimes it doesn't, it just kind of varies per game and all that stuff. So it is a pretty amazing card at 1080p for like $379, you really cannot beat that. When it comes to 14 to 40p, the GTX 1070 still does hold its own above 60 FPS and still about relatively the same placement as it was compared to the other graphics cards. I feel as though this card is going to be the ideal 14 to 40p card because it's able to max out at uh, 60 FPS for most monitors. Of course, if you want to play on 120, then you know whatever, get a GTX 1080. But other than that, it should be a really good performer for uh, 1440p. And at 4K, I guess you could still play at 4K. You're not going to hit the 60 FPS, but then again, no cards really do. So, if you want to play 30 FPS in 4K, the GTX 1070 certainly could do that, but if not, you might want to go for a higher card or get SLI or something like that. Speaking of the GTX 1080, at Computex we've seen some non-reference designs from uh, EVGA. We have, of course, their Super Clock Edition for the Win Edition and their Highest Tier Classified Edition. And from ASUS, we also have their Strix edition of the card, so it is nice that we are finally getting some non-reference designs. Maybe the GTX 1080 won't be forever out of stock, you know, now that there's actually multiple producers making the card. Also from ASUS, though, at Computex, we have the ASUS Avalon, which is their idea for a PC build that anybody can get into. No wires required, it's just a modular design that you can take off the side panels, plug things in, and, you know, just get playing. It has upgradable I.O., it has a bunch of drive bays, and it's kind of just their vision of the future. It's kind of like a console, but not really because it's actually a PC. But it should be interesting to see how that goes, because I feel as though that's something that definitely could flop. But then, of course, we have the biggest announcement from Computex, and that is the RX 480, which is AMD's new Polaris GPU. And as this guy said, I forget what his name is, but he's one of, like, the leaders of AMD, the card is not really aimed at high performance. It's aimed at cheap VR, because the card is only $199, which, uh, most of you know, that's, like, really, really low for a graphics card. When it comes to actual performance though, this card should be about in between an R9 390 and an R9 390X, so on the NVIDIA side that's about in between a 970 and a 980, and it has 2304 stream processors, 4 slash 8 gigs of GDDR5, depending on which model you get, 256 uh, bit memory bus, and it's really really low power at 150 watts. As far as what we should expect from this card, I think that we should expect exactly what we expected before this card was even announced. It's really not a high-end gaming card, but it is good uh, as an entry level into PC gaming. It's going to be a really good VR performer if you want to get into that. And I think it should be interesting to see how this competes with uh, Nvidia's cards, because it's obviously not going to top them, but I wonder if it's still going to sell well or not. That is, however, all the news that we have for today. Computex is still going on, so I'm sure we'll have a lot more news. So if you enjoyed, like, subscribe. If not, dislike. Leave forever. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. But stay tuned for more Computex news. I've been the Saxy Gamer. Thank you and goodbye.